Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. What I'd like to do here is just offer a little guidance if it's needed in the use of the templates that I've made for Pictures to Exe. Here I've opened up Windows Explorer. When you download the templates you're going to find them as zipped files as you can see here. This one is called Film Strip but all I need to do is to right click the Film Strip zipped file choose extract all and if I just hit the button to extract Windows will extract all the contents and place it alongside the zip file now that's quite a good thing because it keeps the zip file and all the original contents safe and it gives us an unzipped file that we can work from now we've got three opportunities here 24 image template a 36 image template or a 48 image template we're going to use the smaller of the three but I'm only going to introduce a couple of images anyway so we're going to be working from that top folder so I'm going to double click to open it up and we can see what we have so the main file we're interested in here at the moment is the project file this is the file down here it's a very small file if I double click that it's going to launch pictures to Exe and as you can see down here it's giving us the basis of our template. What it's not doing at the moment is navigating to where all the images are located. So I'm going to do that over on the left hand side. Let me tuck all those away. Go to my USB. There's the folder we've just unzipped. There's the three options we saw a moment ago. So it's the top one we need. So there are all the images that we've got to overwrite in a moment or two. If I just select one of those, you can read what it says on the right-hand side. Now this template was made quite a while ago, and although it's still valid and works with modern pictures to Exe, in those times we were concentrating quite a bit on keeping the file size down. Things have moved on in a positive way, and we don't have to be quite so fussy. What I'm going to suggest here is that we try this particular template because we've got nothing to lose we've got the template always there to use again let's try an image directly from our camera so one of the first things we need to do is to identify some images we want to use in the template rename them so that they are named 001, 002, 003 and so on and just overwrite the holding files that we can see in the file list here. Now with the spinning round of the screen I brought you into Photoshop's bridge. I've navigated to the same USB drive. There's the template we're working within. But what I've done here is just dropped a few images for demo purposes and there you can see them. So what we would need to do is to gather together and there's lots of different ways you can do this. This is just one way and it's fairly quick but here as you can see I've got images which are quite large more or less 3-2 but they're not all perfectly 3-2 this one down here is and I think there's one other there no they're all slightly different so what I'm going to do here is highlight all of them with the shift click method then I'm going to right click and rename them all I'm going to use batch rename you can do this individually but this is quite fast as you'll see what I'm going to do is to hit the minus sign to remove that sequence letter. In the file names I'm going to choose sequence number. I'm going to choose three digits because that's what I've used in the template and I can choose which number to start from. Number one is appropriate here. If I click rename all of those images and although we've only got five images here we could have had 50 or 500 Photoshop would have done them all. Now all I need to do is to copy these and overwrite those holding images in that film template with 24 images. So with those five images already selected I'm going to right click within Bridge. I'm going to ask Bridge to copy them to and I'll choose a location. I'll navigate to that location making sure I do select the right folder but once I've got the folder open it's going to remind me of course that I've got 
files of that name already there so let's select the folder and away it goes and there's the little warning an item with the same name already exists exists what would you like to do well we're going to apply this to all of them and we want them replaced once that's done we can go back into pictures to exe if we'd chosen 24 images our slideshow would be done so as you see as we've come back into pictures to exe we've now got the five images in place we'll test our template slideshow in a moment but we may as well finish off by just selecting the first one which I've produced as a title so if I select this and go to the objects and animation screen I'm going to make sure that I've got this one selected you can see I've got a little box around the outer edge so I'm going to go up to the top there choose the text tool and I can create my slideshow title I'll just put in there title for short just to demonstrate this it would look I think quite nice if the text was a different color so let's give it a bit of a charcoal color that looks okay to me let's close that and what we're going to do now is just put the cursor back into that position remember there's no music here so I'm just going to press play and we can just sit back and we can watch the template and see exactly what it does but my guess is you've already got a good idea but just to make sure it's working with those images that I use straight from my camera that doesn't look too bad it should flash onto the screen we'll allow all five of these to go through if the images you use the aspect ratio is wrong and it's too far wrong then when these images appear on screen as we're seeing here you may see a little gap top and bottom but so far we're not having any difficulty at all there we may be able to see a little bit of evidence see that little white line around the edge or it may have even been an image that I've chosen that maybe already had a white line around the edge I think it may have actually been that because every one of the other images has worked perfectly okay and of course if we'd put more images in the slideshow would commence or continue with the images we've chosen if you're going to make an executable slideshow and keeping the file sizes really low is important then use those values 1600 by 1009 I'm going to stop this at this point now with the spinning round of the screen I have brought you into Photoshop and I've opened up two further images if it was important for you to keep the file size small then you can always make these images the size that I suggested in the template 1600 pixels on the long side by 1009 and probably the quickest way to do that is with the crop tool so I'm going to select my crop tool but from the options at the top of the screen I'm going to select width and height resolution in the first box I'll put 1600 and don't forget to put the PX to tell Photoshop how it's going to measure and in the next box we want the height 1009 and once again don't forget the PX so there's the size of the file we need hit the tick to commit the change now I can save that and overwrite slide 6 in my template let me do that file save as I'm working on my USB in my film strip this is the one I'm working in 24 so I need to go to number 6 and I'll just overwrite that yes I do want to replace it I'm going to drop this down to about level 6 to keep the file size small move on to the next one the good thing now is the values we've placed up there will remain so I can just click into the image maybe this time hit the enter key so you can see the process is not slow let's go back to my USB and my film strip and of course this one will need to be number seven let's go back into Photoshop and we can take a look and see what we have and did I say come back into Photoshop when I meant pictures to XE? yes I did 
Okay, let's put the cursor up to this point or back to that point. That was the last image we saw previously. So if I press the play button here, we can watch that one appear on screen and make sure that the next two also work equally as well. And I don't think we're going to see anything different from a visual point of view. In fact, I know we're not. That one's looking pretty good, as you can see. And just to bring this video to a close, I'll allow the last one to do its work. So there we are. Using the templates is quite a quick and easy process. Well, that's the point of a template, isn't it? One thing you need to remember as you go through making your slideshow with the template is you will need to save your project file regularly. Now remember if I go back to File Save As here you'll see that the project file here is called Film Template 169 Aspect Ratio 24 Images but you're going to want to change that probably to reflect the name of your slideshow. Then you know all of the work and all of the changes you've made, particularly with the opening title, is now safely stored. And if I bring you to the last image before a fade out to black, there you've got the same thing we had at the start. You can use that for your end credits in exactly the same way. Just select the slide, open up the objects and animation screen, go up to your text tool, and type whatever you want. If my memory serves me correctly, most of the templates that I've created will have a holding file like the ones we've viewed here. Those files will tell you the optimum size you can make the images if you're trying to keep your file size small. Now these days I'm finding I'm using the executable files less and less and I'm using the output to an MP4 video and in those circumstances we don't have to worry too much about the file size as long as it works well with the aspect ratio and the template and the best way to try that drop an image over image 1 in any of the templates see how it looks but here once I had created my show I would be publishing my show via HD video and I would be choosing 60p for ultimate quality and I would be outputting my final slideshow to this medium. Now I was just about to bring this video to a close but then thought perhaps I should complete it by dropping into the template a couple of pieces of music. Now I've located a couple of pieces here one called gliding and one called pond at twilight and you can see I've copied them into my film template folder, the folder we've been working from. I need to go down to the bottom right of my screen because we need to switch from the slide list we're currently in into the timeline because if I scroll to the extreme right we can see that our slideshow needs to be about 4 minutes 32 seconds in length. Now that piece of music called gliding is 2 minutes and 23 Pond at Twilight is 2 minutes and 14 so I've got 4 minutes and 37 seconds to play with let's drop them into our template and see how they work I can just drag them down I'll drag down the Pond at Twilight and I'll scroll to the end click and drag to bring that back so it lines up nicely with the fade out we can test this, let me drag that volume down so I don't drown myself out, but I can test this now by just putting my cursor in that sort of position and pressing play and we can watch and listen. And of course we'd be viewing the end credits and then a fade to black. That looks pretty good. So I think now we can go to the front of our slideshow, so I'll scroll quickly to the front and I'll drag down the other piece of music, Gliding. I'm going to put it in exactly the same track 
and if we now go to the center you can see we've got a little crossover of those two now it looks even though this piece of music was showing that it was 2 minutes and 23 it looks like we've got a few seconds of silence that's one thing you have to be aware of with music sometimes when the length of the music says 2 minutes and 30 if there's quite a degree of silence at the start and the end of course that is included so in hindsight perhaps if we could find another piece of music which was 7 or 8 seconds longer it would be better but what I'll do just to demonstrate this I'll drag this up so we've got a little bit of a crossfade here I'll drag the volume down so we can hear this and I'll just put my cursor at the end press play that's not bad and if we go to the front well we could have the opening credits coming up in silence and then we could have the music just beginning as the images start to be presented and of course the one final thing we'd need to do from here of course file save and save our project file now these templates were made some years ago but I've just opened one successfully in pictures to XE9 and this video has been made in February 2019 don't forget to, if you need any further help just go to our website and drop me an email from the contact section don't forget to check out our YouTube channel there's lots of pictures to XE slideshows and demos there and also our website have a look for some of the slide styles that we offer completely free of charge in the same way as we have with these templates